Okay, so population genetics started about a hundred years ago and it's when people rediscovered Mendelian genetics and combined it with Darwin's thinking about evolution that plant breeders in particular started to wonder uh, whether the theory of evolution could explain uh, the breeding, the selection they were doing. Darwin actually already was fascinated by the diversity in domesticated animals. Uh, dogs, uh, especially pigeons too, uh, but he could not really explain it. So when around 1900 something Mendelian genetics provided the explanation for the selection and evolution in Darwin's thinking and people started to combine these ideas um, they started to wonder how can we explain this diversity this selection in domesticated plants and animals and as good scientists try to do they try to develop a theory what we call now a null hypothesis so what would happen to these Mendelian genes, these Mendelian alleles, if there is no selection, if there is no genetic drift, if everything is random? And that is the foundation of population genetics, and that is the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. So Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is the basis of population genetics, and population genetics is the theory underlying plant and animal selection and breeding. That's how it started. Uh, Fisher, Wright, Haldane and many others developed that theory and they were all plant and animal breeders. In the meantime, uh, things have evolved a little bit. The way we consider, or the way we think about population genetics, genetics is a little bit different. So when it started with Fisher and Wright, it was a kind of forward thinking. We start with a population now, what would happen if we do selection, how will gene frequencies change? And that is what plant breeders and animal breeders do. Uh, to explain certain phenomena in nature, in diversity of wild populations and human populations, uh, since about 40 years ago, people started to reverse the thinking. We have a population now, where does this diversity come from? And that is based on what's called coalescent thinking. That alleles come from a common ancestor. And the big thing about population genetics in plant and animal breeding now is that this kind of coalescent thinking leads us to understand how individuals can be related to each other even when it is not really obvious. And that has effects on uh, molecular breeding, especially the genome-wide association study, genomic selection, because if individuals are related to each other, they are not random samples of a population and that has to be taken into account when you try to link a molecular marker with a phenotype so that is the renewed interest in population genetics and especially then population structure so where do the individuals come from in the recent past so that's why plant and animal breeders still have to learn about population genetics, still have to know about Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium and add to that population structure analysis.